Okay, so let us continue our discussion. So today our topic is uh, structural damping. Now we have uh, already uh, discussed how to derive the equation of motion for the system you can see on your screen. Now obviously the equation of motion is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to the applied force. Now today our focus will be on this middle expression which is Cx dot. Now what is damping? It is the loss of energy. Now we have seen the benefit of having damping particularly in and around resonance because if we have zero damping that is an ideal case then in that case um, our uh, response particularly in the vicinity of resonance it can shoot up to infinite and no material can withstand that amount of stress. So damping in a way it helps us uh, uh, to reduce that uh, deformation in and around uh, resonance. Now obviously uh, we experience a large amount of deformation uh, which uh, of course, we can control just by controlling the amount of damping and that is the reason damping plays a very important role in structural dynamics. Now in our model if you recall at the day 1 I told you that Fd that is the damping force it is proportional to x dot and that is the model what we have used in our previous analysis. Now the moment we have this obviously the damping force Fd will be some damping constant times x dot and in fact in the last class we solved some examples where we defined the damping with respect to certain velocity and we solved those examples. Now today uh, we are going to see how this uh, damping uh, plays a crucial role in the structural dynamics and uh, what are the different properties of this damping. Now obviously even in this discussion we are going to stick to this model what we call viscous damping. So this is viscous damping. Now let us assume that x of t that is the displacement x of t uh, it is obviously for the time being let us consider it to be a sinusoid and if you recall the solutions the nature of the solution this is omega d times t minus theta. Obviously because of damping as time progresses the mm, magnitude of the response will uh, reduce that we will see in a minute but for the time being let us assume that the displacement field is given by this expression. Obviously what will be x dot of t? this will be a omega d then cos omega d t minus theta. And obviously what is dx this is nothing but x dot dt. Now if we wish to find out what is the energy dissipated So the amount of energy dissipated in one cycle in one cycle. So that is the property of the damping let us see. So this will be say E stands for energy and then subscript D which represents damping. So uh, it will be integration of the damping force Fd times dx. Obviously we have to integrate this over a cycle. So if I write down the expression of dx which we have already evaluated so this is x dot dt and what is fd uh, that we can write c x dot times we have dx. And obviously 
if we consider one cycle, so this will be 2 pi by omega d. Now, what we can further write in place of this dx, so let us write x dot dt. Then what we have 0 to 2 pi divided by omega d and then we have c and in place of x dot we can write the expression that we have already derived. So, this will be a square omega d square then cos square omega d t minus theta times d t fine. So, what we have now is basically the time function here times d t and we integrate that expression between 0 to this is equal to actually t d. So, one time period we consider that means one complete cycle and over that we try to estimate what is the amount of energy dissipated due to damping. So, we have c then a square omega d square then integration 0 to 2 pi by omega d times cos square omega d t minus theta times d t. Obviously, if you have cos square of some expression, here it is omega d t minus theta, we can convert it in terms of cos 2 theta. I mean, if the first bracketed term is theta, so it is like cos square theta, so we can write it in terms of cos 2 theta. So, if we complete that integration, which I leave it as an exercise, very simple one, you can easily do it. Then effectively what you will get is pi c a square omega d. So, this I just leave it as an exercise. So, this is a home task for all of you, just cross verify, it is very simple. You can easily perform this integral and then you can see what is the expression, it will be pi by omega d. Now, we also know what is the expression of c. If you recall, c is equal to twice eta m omega n, right. And what is omega n? this is square root of k by m and what is omega d? So, nothing but omega n square root of 1 minus eta square. Now, if we put that expression here, so pi times in place of c we can write twice eta m omega n then a square and then in place of omega d we can write omega n then 1 minus eta square. So, finally, what we get 2 pi eta square root of 1 minus eta square then m omega n square times a square. Now, again in place of m omega n square, what we can write from this expression if you see this will be k. So, effectively what we get twice pi eta square root of 1 minus eta square, then this is k times a square. So, this is the energy dissipated in one cycle. So, that is the expression we have when we use viscous damping. That means, our damping force is proportional to the velocity. So, that is the expression for energy dissipated in one cycle. So, the point to be noted here is E d is proportional to S square.
So, the energy dissipated in one cycle is actually proportional to the amplitude square. So, that is the model says in case of viscous damping. Okay, so, let us continue. Now, if we define what is the input energy in this case. So, let us say input energy is E i. What is input energy? So, we have f of t times d x. Now, just imagine we have f naught sin lambda t as the input because in that case only we will have uh, output also as a sinusoid with a phase lag and then we can write down d x that is x dot d t and we have to integrate this function over one time period. Now, if we do that, let us further simplify the expression. So, this is 2 pi by omega d and then we have f naught sin lambda t in place of x dot, we can write a omega d cos omega d t minus theta times d t. Obviously, we can take this constants out of the integral. So, we have f naught omega d times a and then within the integral we have 2 pi by omega d as the upper limit and then we have sin lambda t times cos omega d t minus theta d t. Now, if you perform this integral, you can actually show again I will leave a home task for you. So, you can show that this is pi f naught a and then sin theta. So, this is again a home task just perform this integral and verify. So, what we have here is the expression for energy per cycle. So, in this case if you look at the expression E i is actually proportional to the amplitude. So, now we have energy per cycle and that we have estimated at the input as well as the amount of energy dissipated because of damping. Now, if we plot the expression, so on the x axis we have displacement and here we have energy. Then obviously, for the damping it will vary with the square of the amplitude and in case of input energy it is proportional. That means, if I draw input energy per unit cycle, so it will be a straight line. While if we draw the damping, so it will be proportional to the amplitude and at this point what is the deformation? This is x equal to a. So, this is E d curve and then we have E i. Now, up to this point it is fine. So, we have estimated the amount of damping uh, we expect per cycle and it will vary with the square of the amplitude. So, let us move further. If I just quickly sum up what we have the displacement field in this case x of t is equal to a sin omega d t minus theta. Then obviously, x dot of t is a omega d 
cos omega dt minus theta. Now, if you look at this expression, obviously we can further modify this expression. So, what we have here is a omega d and in place of cos theta. So, what we can write is 1 minus sin square omega dt minus theta. Now, if we take this a inside of the square root, obviously what we will get is x dot of t which is equal to omega d, then square root obviously if we take a inside, so the first term will be a square minus it will be a sin omega d t minus theta whole square. Now, we can easily identify what is this quantity, this is nothing but x right that is the displacement. So, omega d times square root of a square minus x square. So, f d that is the damping force is what it is c times x dot and in place of x dot what we can write is c times then omega d and then square root of a minus sorry a square minus x square. Now, just by looking at this expression for the damping force, you can easily conclude we can simplify this expression. So, it will be f d divided by c we have omega d here. So, omega d times a whole square plus x by a whole square is equal to 1. So, if we look at this expression, this is the equation of an ellipse. That means, if I just qualitatively plot on the x axis again we have the displacement field x and then on the y axis we have f of d then obviously it will form an ellipse and What is this quantity? This is nothing but the amplitude of vibration. Obviously, this uh, ellipse is not in good shape, but qualitatively we can visualize what should be the nature of the curve when we have damping versus displacement. It is ellipse. Now, if you look at the total restoring force. in the system. If you recall, we, we started with a mass spring dashpot and then total restoring force, let us say it be f, obviously it is spring force plus the damping force. Now, what is the spring force? It is k times x and then plus minus because of this square root, we have c omega d then a square minus x square. So, that is the restoring force we have in the system. Now, for this if we plot again qualitatively obviously again it will also be a straight line, but because of this spring force so this is x and we have restoring force here and this is spring force f x equal to k times x. So, so about this line we will have the ellipse
and again this is the point if I draw. So, this amplitude will be the amplitude of vibration. Now, you can see the nature of damping force with the displacement field for our system where we consider viscous damping model. Up to this point actually we can see the nature how with uh, displacement our damping force varies and also the restoring force in the system that varies. In both the cases the nature is elliptical and obviously the major and minor axis of the ellipse will depend upon the type of force that we consider. In case of uh, damping force alone the horizontal axis that is the displacement field will be the major axis and we can also identify the minor axis in the vertical direction. In case of restoring force obviously it will be elliptical about this line k times x. Now in all our problem again we will mostly consider viscous damping and uh, we start with the problem statement where the damping is defined. Normally we say a system is having say 2 percent critical damping ratio or 5 percent critical damping ratio then for that system depending upon the mass and the natural frequency that means the system parameters either mass and stiffness then we can also quantify the amount of damping present in the system. Now that information is enough for us to completely solve the response of the system. But very often we as an engineer we need to design the material and when we design the material one of the critical property of the material is its damping. So for all our problem we do not need to design the material but uh, for your information I will just introduce you to two most important parameter when you design a material so far its damping is concerned. Now the first parameter is what we call specific damping capacity. So, specific damping capacity of a material is defined as it is the ratio of the energy loss per cycle that is we have already quantified this this is E of D right. So, it is the ratio of energy loss per cycle and the peak potential energy that is Ua. So, how do you define specific damping capacity of a material? We call it specific damping capacity SDC. It is ED divided by U of A. So, what is ED? We have already defined it is 2 pi eta square root of 1 minus eta square times K times A square this is the expression we have already derived and in case of Ua it is half k times uh, your x square but it is the peak potential energy that means x is equal to a. Now obviously uh, you can see this k gets cancelled and then the expression for SDC is 4 pi eta square root of 1 minus eta square. So, that is the expression for specific damping capacity of a material. Now, when we define specific damping capacity, 
per radian, then that quantity is called specific damping factor. So, what is specific damping factor? It is S D F. This is nothing but we have E D divided by U A that is the specific damping capacity and that we find out par radian. So, then we can use this expression what we have already derived and then if we divide it by 2 pi the expression is twice eta square root of 1 minus eta square. So, that is the expression for specific damping factor. We sometimes call it also loss factor. The reason is damping is always associated with energy loss and hence we call this factor as loss factor. Now, if you recall um, logarithmic decrement that we have already discussed What is the expression for that? Delta that is the amount of logarithmic decrement is, is equal to 2 pi eta. That is the expression for logarithmic decrement and therefore, we can actually use this expression and then what will be E d divided by U a? This is nothing but if we divide this expression with 2 pi eta, then we will have 2 square root of 1 minus eta square times we have delta. So, that means in place of twice pi eta, we replace it with the logarithmic decrement. Now, that is the relation between the logarithmic decrement and the damping energy per unit cycle when we have also defined the peak potential energy. Now, these are the two parameters that are required for the design of the material. So, when we design the material, then we need to define its damping and for that actually we need these two parameters, which is not directly related to the structural analysis because the moment we define damping either as a critical damping ratio or absolute value, that is the starting point for our structural analysis and then we develop the equation of motion either it is uh, forced or free vibration and then accordingly we solve the problem. However, the moment you deal with a material and you design that material particularly in the mechanical systems, they need to define different materials and for them these two properties are very important. One is specific damping capacity, another is loss factor. It is also important for us sometimes we also need to define special type of material there these are the two things when we design the material we need to keep in mind because these two together will define the capacity of energy loss per unit cycle and which is essential for structural vibrations particularly in and around resonance where it actually helps us to avoid a catastrophic failure. So, with that let us close our discussion today. We will continue on this topic further, we will solve some example and we will see how we can use these damping properties further in our structural analysis. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.